Jefferson City elections are coming up April 6th, and I'm here today with Angela Silvey running for Municipal Judge of Jefferson City. Um, hey, this is Gerardo, broker owner of Downtown Realty, and at the end of this video, Angela has a special invitation for you guys, so stay tuned. Um, hello, Angela. Hi. Me and Angela uh, met in college here uh, in Jefferson City. We've done uh, some real estate transactions, and, sh and we wanted to make a quick video to inform you guys about... Um, she is running for municipal judge at here in Jefferson City. So let's let's get straight to it. Um, Angela, please tell us about yourself. Thank you. So I grew up here in Jefferson City. I have a wonderful husband, Ryan. I've been married to for over 10 years now. I have two beautiful daughters, Taylor, who's going to be 23 this Saturday. It's hard to believe. And another daughter, Callie, who's going to be 15 in April. Um, I've owned a small business here in town for over six years called Sylvian Associates. Um, during the tornado, we're really happy that we were able to offer free legal services to people in the community that had were having troubles with either their landlord or with their insurance company. Um, we, we make sure to volunteer and give back to the community. I'm on the Historic City of Jefferson Board, which helps with preservation of older homes or older buildings here in town. And I also sit on the United Way Board. So a big part of, of what I like to do for the community is make sure to give back. Very involved, um, always here locally, and let's get straight to it. So, um, Angela, what does it, what does the municipal judge of Jefferson City do for our citizens? So, um, on the municipal level court, it's a lot lower level offenses. So, we're talking speeding tickets, traffic tickets, um, driving while revoked, driving while suspended, DWIs, um, maybe someone that has stole a small amount of merchandise from a store. Um, it's really going to be kind of your lower level criminal offenses. Um, not only that, but the municipal court handles code violations. So if a building is falling down and a landlord is not taking care of it or not mowing their grass, those code violations will be handled by the city court um, through the municipal judge. And she's located uh, on High Street downtown area. So we're doing, trying to do a lot. You guys are familiar with our community down here with the help that downtown area needs. Um, so, so she is locally here involved. Um, so that, that's some of the, of that, um, um, when does the municipal court take place? So municipal court is every Wednesday. It starts at 8.30 in the morning. Um, there, there used to be night court, um, and that has kind of gone away over the last couple years. And so it's only every Wednesday at 8.30. Um, and that docket runs until that docket gets done. I know there's been some discussion throughout the community about bringing night court back. Um, that's something I'd be happy to look into for people so they don't have to take off work to be able to go for a municipal traffic ticket. Um, we have other options as well. The local prosecutor is, is very good about giving offers that allow you to pay something out of court for something small like a speeding ticket and things like that so that you don't have to take off work. Um, but obviously with funding issues and things like that, that's something I'd have to look into once I got, got on the bench. Um, but right now it's every Wednesday at 830. And then if, if you were to do the night court, would it also just be on Wednesdays? That's something we'd have to check with court staff um, because obviously you don't want to make all of court staff then have to work in the evening as well. And with funding, because you have to have security, you have to have bailiffs, um, all of your staff has to stay if you do night court. Um, my guess is it would be a variation if you ended up doing that. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff we don't have no idea about or think about. This is stuff Angela will um, we'll bring up. And um, what are some of the biggest issues that you would be dealing with? So as I talk to people in the community, I think a lot of issues that I'll be dealing with are code violations. And so we have this beautiful city, but we have so many houses that are just falling apart. Um, and a lot of people have talked about we have this kind of housing crisis after the tornado where, you know, there's a lot of rentals that aren't available any longer, especially for people that, that need a short term rental. Maybe they're going to buy a home. Um, and so if we could allow some of those landlords to find a way, if they're not going to take care of their property, to sell that property to someone who would then turn it into affordable housing. And so I think really enforcing code violations and making people be responsible for the property they have is something that, that the municipal court needs to focus on. And it's going to kind of be a, a priority for me. The other is we have payment dockets through the municipal court. And so if someone gets a fine then they're set up on a payment plan, then they can't make their payment, then they come back to court, then they can't make another payment, so then they're shifted to the next payment docket. And that's not really fair to taxpayers who don't have to come to municipal court. Taxpayers, are you listening? 
Yeah, I, you know, because then they're just shifted over and over and over. And those are resources that, that just don't need to be used. We need to make people, if they're fine, it's $200, maybe give them one or two payment options, but not a year worth of payments. Okay. That's very, very important. And um, something that I, I didn't know about that, that we definitely want to bring up is uh, how many registered voters actually vote during our election, our local election. We saw what happened last year through the big election, but... How many registered voters actually vote during the Jefferson City election? So it's really surprising when you look at the numbers. There's there's over there's in that forty five thousand range of actually registered voters in the city. But when you look at historically year after year when we've had municipal elections, you're getting like five thousand people coming out to vote. So I mean that's that's pretty low turnout for municipal elections. And so you know I would just encourage people to get out and vote in your municipal elections. I know a lot of people like to vote in those presidential elections. Those are obviously very important. But your local elections, I mean, those are the people that are you know handling your tax dollars, your your local streets, making yeah. sure your parks are taking place. And so local elections are, are very important. That's almost less than ten percent voter turnout locally, and this is our community. It's where we live. So if we can, if you if we can get out and vote uh, for our local elections, and um, um, it's very important because that's yeah, we need to increase that number, especially for our local tax dollars and. Um, Angela, what would it, what would being municipal judge of Jefferson City mean to you? Well, I think it's just another way for me to give back to the community. Um, I want to make sure that the taxpayers are being taken care of. I want to make sure that the municipal court is running fair. Um, I don't believe that people should, you know, be excessively fined or thrown in jail for small infractions, and I think that's something that I would make sure to maintain. Um, a few years ago, I testified in front of the Senate. There were some changes that needed to take place for municipal court reform. And I went down and testified um, on behalf of some of my clients that were really having problems. Um, at the time, if you owed a fine and you couldn't pay it, and then you would get a warrant and then you'd be placed in jail, well, if you couldn't post your bond, you may sit there for five or six days, you would get out, and then you'd still owe the fine. We work to change that so that if you did five or six days in jail, the judge could then say, okay, you've paid your debt, you no longer owe the fine, because otherwise we were creating this cycle of, of people just being thrown in jail over and over when they couldn't pay their fine. Um, and so I, you know, I want to continue that, continue helping the citizens, continue making sure that the taxpayers are taken care of. Awesome, awesome. And her husband has also helped in being part of the, the community and the local community government. Mm -hmm. government. And um, so... Um, Thank you for all that information. Um, Angela will be hosting a meet and greet next, uh, is it next week? Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. So tell yep. us a little bit about that. So next Tuesday, we're going to have a meet and greet at Coffee Zone. It's going to be from 7.30 to 9. That'll allow people to be able to stop in before work. Um, we've got several people helping with that host committee. We're very proud to have uh, Second Lady Claudia Kehoe is going to be on that host committee, okay. um, Pat Rowe Kerr, we've got Pat Thomas, a good, good friend of mine, Ian Hugh from the Lake area, um, and then a good friend of mine, Stephanie Weber, who I've been friends with since uh, since kindergarten. Oh my. So, yes, a long time. So we're very proud to have that, um, and, you know, we just hope everybody can stop by. That event is on Facebook. If you go to Sylvie for Judge, you'll see that on Facebook as well, but you, you don't have to be invited. You're more than welcome to just pop in and say hello, and I'll answer any questions you have. We'll put those links uh, for the event in the comments. Uh, I will tag Angela to this video. If you guys have questions before the election, come this right around the corner. So, um, Angela, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Um, any questions you guys have, reach out to her. Very easy to talk to. Um, April 6th are the Jefferson City elections. Please get out and vote. Get out and vote. Thank you for your time.